frequently associate people with food, which then attracts them into towns and roads and puts both people and bears in danger. Bears that have been known to associate people with food are known as nuisance bears, and those usually end up having to be destroyed. So always remember that giving food to or approaching any wild animals interferes with their natural activities and is the leading cause of conflict which results in serious injury or death to both people and animals. Now when you are out in bear country, there are several things that you can do to keep yourself safe. If you're going to go hiking in bear country, always remember to let somebody know where you are going and when you plan on being back. Now if you're hiking with children, always keep them close by and within your eyesight. Make sure also to make some type of noise while you're out hiking, such as talking, singing, clap your hands, just to let the bears in the area know that you're coming through. Because nine times out of ten, those bears are going to leave the area to avoid you. But always remember to always watch for signs of bears. Watch for any tracks, digging, dropping, scratch marks on trees, or logs torn apart. So that you can avoid the areas with a lot of bear activity. Now remember to never hike at night or alone. And to always stay on the trail. Now... Also, leave any food and drinks at home because bears have amazing sense of smell and are very attracted to sweet smells. Now, if you follow these basic guidelines, you should always, most always avoid most common encounters. But remember, there is always a chance that you can run into a bear in the woods. Most bear encounters occur when people are not making sufficient amount of noise or people approach or surprise a bear at close range. You may also accidentally get too close to a carcass or other food source or come upon a female bear and her cubs. If you do encounter a bear out in the wild, always remember not to panic. Then group together and do not run or make any sudden movement. If you did make a sudden movement, it may instinctively cause the bear to charge. Now remember to give any bears a chance to identify you as a human and not as a threat. So remember to talk firmly while backing away and avoid direct eye contact. Now cautiously retreat to a safe place and always remember to assess the situation and always use your common sense. Now there are also two different types of confrontations with bears as well. There is a predatory confrontation where the bear will continue to approach you, follow you, disappear and reappear, basically behave in a stalking manner. Now if you find yourself in this behavior, it is usually with a black bear. And also if you find yourself in this situation, be prepared to fight back using any means possible if this bear is going to make contact with you. Now the other type of confrontation is a defensive confrontation usually found with grizzly bears. The defensive confrontation is usually a sudden encounter with a grizzly bear, protecting its face, its cubs, or its food. Now the bear may charge you because that it feels threatened that you're in its area. Now if this occurs, you're supposed to drop to the ground and play dead. You're supposed to lay flat on your stomach and clasp your hands behind your neck and head. And this it makes you play dead and then the bear will leave the area because the bear feels that the threat has disappeared. Now if you know you're going out in bear country though, it's always a good idea to carry a can of bear spray. Bear spray is just a bigger version of our pepper spray and it's been known to ward off a lot of bear attacks. Now remember to carry this also while you're out camping, hunting, and fishing. There are a few things you can do during these activities to keep yourself safe. Now while you're camping, always remember to set up your cooking and eating areas, supply areas at least 100 yards away from your sleeping area. Completely make your sure your sleeping area is always completely free of food, food odors, and beverages, so not to lure in bears. And before you even set up your camp, check the area for any bear activity and camp in and as any way away from any thick brush or streams. 
Now, while you're out hunting in bear country, make sure to also try to stay alert and aware of your surroundings at all times. Be sure to bring the right equipment with you. Bring at least one can of bear spray per person. And remember to bring a pulley system and ropes for handling your game meat and food storage. <laughs> remember to always carry a cell phone and a handheld or a handheld radio. So always let somebody know where you're going and when you're going to be back as well. And try to make sure you go hunting with a friend so that you're not alone. And always know that your kill can attract the bears in the area. Now while you're fishing also, follow all the same basic guidelines. And remember that you fish will attract the bears from the area as well. And while you are fishing and hunting, stay aware at all times. And if a bear does approach you and you have a kill or catch, throw it over to him. Your kill or catch is not more important than your life. Well, most people do not know how to tell the difference between a black bear and a brown bear. Black bears are found almost throughout most of North America, while brown bears are found only in northwestern states, Alaska, and western Canada. So where you, can, where you are can help you determine what kind of bears you may encounter. But if you are in an area where both black bears and brown bears are present, you need to know the difference of how to tell them apart. Now, although their names signify that black bears may usually are black and brown bears are brown, that sometimes is not the case. Both black bears, in some cases, it can be over 700 pounds. While brown bears' average weight is 300 to 500 pounds for interior grizzly bears, and 800 to 1,200 pounds for coastal grizzly bears. Now, also, their heights can differ as well. From the black bear, usually standing about six feet on their height.